Well, people are asking the question today, why would or why should Christians support Israel? You know, I recently heard from a, a noted theologian uh, that you all know his name. He said, as of right now, Israel is illegitimate. The existence of Israel is illegitimate. And the Jew has no longer any promises from God. This guy is famous. And I almost fell off my chair. The truth of the matter is, friends, listen up carefully. Number one, understand that Israel is a secular government just like Chile, just like Canada, just like the United States. It's a secular government. That was prophesied in Scripture, by the way. Listen, this is why you should support Israel. Hear me out. God said in the book of Ezekiel and in the book of Isaiah that he would draw the nation of Israel. He called them a nation from all the four corners of the earth, Isaiah 43, and bring them back into their own land in unbelief, Ezekiel chapter 36. He would speak to them as dry bones lying in a field upon the ground and he would cause the bones to come together and that they would stand up and then God would assemble the, the tissue, the muscle, the sinew until they were standing. And then Ezekiel 37 tells us, 36, 37 tells us that he would at some time breathe into them life and they would be an actual physical nation again. Christian, listen. You need to divorce yourself from feelings and from what is trending on social media and find out what the Bible has to say. God says, I'm going to build my nation. And listen, there's a big reason for this. I'm going to build my nation once again in the last days. It will be an indicator of the end times. Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 to 27. Because it sets up many prophetic end time events that are key. One of which, by the way, is that all nations will turn their back on Israel in the last days. Book of Zechariah, chapter 12 to 14, but also, again, Ezekiel chapter 38, including America, by the way. We may be in the, in the throes of doing that right now. You might say, yes, good, America needs to get away from, from Israel. This is terrible what's going on. Wait a minute, listen. What's happening right now is that the nation of Israel think they think they're strong enough on their own. They think they've got enough technology, enough airplanes, enough tanks, and uh, enough uh, military prowess. As of I, uh, this time speaking, Israel uh, is not leaning on God. But we know that according to Scripture, there's going to be some war or series of wars that's going to bring Israel to the point of breaking in the sense of leaning upon itself. And then Ezekiel tells us, 38, 39, that the Jews will begin to turn their eyes toward God. Nations do what nations do. God presides over them. He watches them. Is Israel sinless? No. But Israel is Israel God's chosen people? Without a doubt. God said they are. Is his covenant with Israel eternal? Yep, he said so. In fact, in Judges chapter 1, you can read about the, the land layout, the parameters of the land promised by God way back to Moses. But it's recounted in Scripture in most places, or many places, but one of them is the book of Judges chapter 1. Remarkable. Here's the thing. We need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God says to do that. God says that the Christian is to provoke the Jew to jealousy by our love for them and for God. So friends, listen, it is a very critical thing, but I got to tell you, I'm not sweating this one out. When I say it's a critical thing that you stand and pray for Israel, Christian, what are you doing? Jesus is going to ask you this in the day of judgment. What did you do to the least of these, my brethren? Matthew chapter 25. What did you do? Did you know that? When Christ returns, he's going to ask, what did you do to, to me when I was hungry and thirsty or naked or sick or in prison? Jesus was talking to, what did you do to my brethren? Well, who was he referring to? He's not referring to the church, I'll tell you that. Read it in its context. He's referring to, in Matthew 25, 
what did you do to my brethren, the Jews, in their time of need? So, friend, listen to this. If God does not keep his promises to Israel in their eternal covenant, Abrahamic covenant, if God doesn't keep that covenant, you're not going to go to heaven. I'm not going to go to heaven. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the Pope right now or you're a brand new Christian giving your heart to Christ. You're not going to heaven. Because if God can't keep his promises to Israel, he has no obligation to keep his promises to you. Of course, I'm being rather sarcastic right now because the fact is God will keep his promises to Israel. That's why the Christian should defend and protect and to watch out for Israel. Because God who promises Israel, he's going to keep those promises. He's the same God that made promises to you that he would save you and that the cross is effectual, that what Jesus did do as a Jew died on the cross in Jerusalem in the occupied land that the Romans occupied called Israel. Nowhere in the Bible, by the way, is Israel ever called Palestine. Okay, that's just not in the Bible. It's never been, it's never going to be. It's always been the land of Israel. So friend, listen, find a Jew and love on them. That's why, by the way, Satan is grabbing people right now and manipulating people to attack and kill Jews. You need to pick sides. That's right. You need to pick a side. Which side are you on? Are you trying to be cool and flow with your friends at school or university and be pro-Palestinian? To be pro-Palestinian just might, could be, it could indicate that you're pro-Hamas. You better watch out. You see, Hamas has taken advantage of the Palestinian argument to destroy Israel. Watch out which side you pick, friend. Make sure that when you land, you're landing in the pages of the Bible and not on some social media trending moment. That's certain destruction. 